Hi everyone, it's Emmanuel here. I want to make a statement as lovingly as possible right now, and that is this. You are not losing your rewards. You are losing your salvation. You are not losing your rewards, but you're losing your salvation. I want to say that two times because many people believe, I know there are different peoples out there on the internet, even people I know personally, that they think they're saved and they know even their own spiritual condition that you know they're living worldly, they're doing sin, and that's why they say, oh yeah, you know, I'm probably going to lose my rewards, but I'm going to enter into heaven. And they base it on 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12 to 15, saying, Paul saying how if you build your foundation with wood, hay, and stubble, you, you know, your works are going to be burned, but you're going to be scarcely saved. And they base it on that. Now let me tell you something. If you're basing your eternal salvation on the phrase that you're going to be scarcely saved, there's something absolutely drastically wrong with your quote-unquote salvation. No one who truly loved Jesus Christ, no one who is truly born again is basing their eternal destiny, okay, on the word scarcely saved. Do you know that? You're not losing your, sal you're not losing your rewards. You're losing your salvation. There are countless, countless, countless of testimonies of people who had near-death experiences actually died, doctors brought them back to life, or people who have visions of heaven and hell that God took them there. Okay, a couple of the big ones that you need to read are Mary K. Baxter, or Cho Thomas. You know, these are one of the best testimonies. There's so many more. Go on my website and check out the links. Now, I know some people are saying, oh, you know, I don't believe these are all false prophets, you know, and all false teachers. Let me tell you something. You be watchful for your words. Because Jesus says every, for every idle word that a man speaks, he'll give it an account of it on day of judgment. And I've, I've read the testimonies of these two people, Mary Kay Baxter and Joe Thomas, and I can tell you, as far as I can tell right now, they're true, they're true mouthpieces and, and prophetic voices from God. They've seen people in hell who are Christians, pastors, stealing money from the church. Okay, never repented. Those who commit uh, adultery and fornication, sexual sin, Christians ended up in hell. They never repented. Those who had unforgiveness in their heart ended up in hell. Many, many testimonies I can go into. You go and read it online. I'm telling you, the, the people quote-unquote discerners, you know, like I'm discerning my spirit. So many people say that when, you know, let me tell you something. Many people who say that they're discerning, when all they're doing, they're not really discerning from the spirit. Because what they're, what they're doing is just they're hearing from their own mind. Okay? And they think they're discerning, because if you're really discerning from the Spirit, you're going to hear the truth of God in His prophetic voices and the things that He's telling people to live holy, to repent of their sins. Yet, these quote-unquote discerners continue to live in their sins, live in worldliness, claiming that they're discerning, because they have these four, five, six, seven points, however, how many t t uh, points of theology and doctrines that they have. Guys, I love you with all my heart, the love of Jesus Christ, to tell you this. You know, there was someone who did the same to me. If it wasn't for this guy called David Servant who woke me up in my sleep, I thought I was saved. I thought I was secured. I thought I was going to church, doing all these leading worship, Bible studies, and all these things. All the time, I was stuck in my sin, looking at porn, all these things. And I'm t I, I, put, I told it in my public testimonies. Go watch it. But it was a, not until when Jesus revealed to me through His Word, Scriptures like 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 to 11, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 5, Colossians chapter 3, Galatians chapter 5, verse 19, Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 6, 1 John 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Revelation chapter 21, 22. I can go on, on and on and on in Scriptures telling us that if you do not pursue holiness, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, you will not, not, not enter the kingdom of heaven. You can claim all you want that you're once saved, always saved, how you're the elect, how you're chosen from foundation of the world, you can call all these things all you want, okay? And I hope you don't do that while continuing to practice your sin because there are millions of people, I, millions, so many, so many people today in hell thinking they were saved, but they ended up in hell because they never repented of their sins. They never pursued holiness. And we are out of time, everyone. We have no time left. Jesus is walking through the door now. This year, in 2012, you're going to be absolutely surprised. You're going to be absolutely surprised. Am I saying that the rapture is absolutely going to happen in 2012? No. And I'm going to say this because I know people are going to twist things around. Because uh, I'm not a date setter. But I, you know, the Bible says no one knows the day of the hour. But you can know when he is at the door. Read Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter 24, 33. Three verses before that verse in 36 where Jesus says no one knows the day of the hour. We know when it's at the door. 
by looking at all the signs of the times. You know it. If you're a watcher, you know these things. If you're a watchman, you know these things. You know, the war of Israel, the things with Iran, the tension, you know, FEMA camps being set up and activated, the one world government, one world currency, Euro, uh, you know, uh, US uh, currency crashing, and all these things. You know, you know. And, and the coming California earthquake, you know these things are happening. Tsunamis coming the east and west coast, you know Jesus is coming. You know it's coming. So I just want to urge you. Guys, I'm not here to argue with you because if you want to just argue, there are many, many, many videos and scriptures and people that people go online and argue all they want, you know, instead of just repenting. You can go online and do that. But I, I, I submit to you, please, please, this is, not a, this is not a battle of argument. You can win. I, I'm telling you, win the battle. Win it. I, I, I can, I'm telling you, you win the argument. All I want is that you, you and I to repent of our sins truly examine our faith to see whether we're in the faith what is it to me yeah what is it if i win the argument what is it yeah okay yeah you cry, give me a trophy i don't care what is it that you win an argument and lose your soul and lose your eternal soul into hellfire what is that to you i give you ten thousand trophies you take it all but I want you so. I want you to be ready at the coming of Jesus. Please, guys. There's so many people that contact me and send me messages on Facebook and YouTube and all these things saying how they're the elect, how they're always saved, how they never lose their salvation. And yet I go and click on their web pages. I go and click their profiles. Guess what you see? You find earthly, worldly things, okay, that they click liked on. You know, people that they, they liked on who clearly these things when you when you look at them are full of demonic strongholds yet they like them they're doing them and here and then the second thing that you find are the are the false grace teachers that they listen to i wonder why they think they're okay because they're listening to the false grace teachers and they're living a worldly life okay in fact there's a video on youtube this guy who thinks that he says he's going to seminary Okay, he's going to seminary, con convinced that he's the elect, convinced that he's saved. Yeah, he was going out on Saturday, you know, getting drunk. And there's a, a group of people go preaching the gospel on the streets, confronted him, told him that no drunkards to enter into the kingdom of heaven. You know, but he thinks he was saved. He was yelling at these people preaching. Look, you know, this is the, 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 the lie that the devil has been telling this generation. That you can be in your sin. That you don't have to repent of your sin. And call it grace and still enter the kingdom of heaven. You cannot. Please, the time is over. Time is over. I just want you and I to look into our lives right now. Please, to examine our lives to see if we're ready to see God. Don't cling on a doctrine or theory, okay? Because a doctrine is not going to stand in, in, in a holy, before a holy God. And I just pray that may you and I find life by really looking in the words of Jesus in repentance obeying His commandments and pursuing holiness because only those people will enter into the kingdom of God. So please, if you think that you're just losing your rewards and you're not losing your salvation, the likelihood is that you're probably losing your salvation and you're not entering the heaven, at least at this very moment. But the grace and the good news of Jesus Christ is that if we repent, turn away from our sins, trust in Jesus, and from now on, pursuing holiness, perfecting holiness in the fear of God, bearing fruits in our lives, then it is then, only then, that we know that we'll be ready at the coming of Jesus. Surely He is coming anytime right now. And may you and I keep ourselves, keep our garments, just like what Revelation chapter 16, verse 15 saying, Jesus, behold, I'm coming like a thief. Blessed is he who keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and be ashamed before the Son of Man. May you and I not do that. May you and I keep our garments, purify ourselves, so that we'll be ready at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. May you and I behold His glory on that great day and enter into rapture and that we prepare now because time is over. May you and I do that until Jesus comes back. God bless you.